Good afternoon, everyone. Glad to see all of you. So before we start, I just want to make sure that everybody who's becoming a citizen today is sitting in these rows here. Um, obviously, there's going to be some family members, but if you are becoming a citizen, that you're actually in one of these chairs. All good? Okay. So good afternoon again. My name is Farida Robinson, and I am the clerk of today's ceremony. Today with me is my team, um, Sylvie. I don't see her here. Over there in the corner, you might have met them when you checked in, is Sharon and Will. Uh, the candidates for today's ceremony have indicated an English language preference, and as such, today's ceremony will be conducted predominantly in English. So before we get started today, I'd like to explain to you the procedures of today's ceremony and provide you with some important information. So today's ceremony will last approximately an hour. Guests are welcome to take pictures of their friends and family. However, we ask that you please remain in your seats when taking pictures or videos so that the flow of the ceremony is not disrupted. And just to let you know, there will be an opportunity at the very end to take pictures with the platform party. So just to keep in mind that the aisles must remain clear at all times, specifically the front aisle here and in the front. Um, if you have young children here today and you're becoming a Canadian citizen, you will need to stay in the room for the full length of the ceremony. If there's a need to and you need to take your children out, you can just go through those doors. But we ask that you make sure that you're back in your seat for the oath. Out of respect for the dignity of the ceremony, it is not permitted to wear hats unless it's for traditional or religious beliefs, health purposes, or part of an official uniform. In a few moments, today's presiding official will enter the room signaling the opening of the ceremony. The ceremony will then proceed as follows. Words of welcome, administration of the oath of citizenship, presentation of certificates, signing the oath of citizenship form, congratulatory remarks, and the singing of our national anthem. All candidates 14 years of age and older must repeat the oath as it's the final requirement to becoming a Canadian citizen. You must repeat the oath in English or French or both after the presiding official. If there is any doubt that you have taken the oath, you will not be called forward to receive your certificate today. When the oath of citizenship is administered in English and in French, the presiding official will start by saying, I swear, but you have the choice to say either I swear or I affirm. During the oath, raise your right hand, and if you wish, you can hold a holy book in your left hand. You will then be called forward to receive your citizenship certificate and sign the oath of citizenship at the table located to my left. The ceremony will end with the singing of our bilingual national anthem. We encourage you to sing it loudly and with pride. The words to O Canada are included in the program. And after you've signed the oath, we ask that you return to your seat. And now we are delighted to tell you about a very special gift from the Institute for Canadian Citizenship. As our newest Canadian citizens, you are eligible for a cultural access pass that will give you free admission to more than 1,400 museums, art galleries, historic sites, parks for one year. This is what it looks like, and it would be in the little bag that we gave you today. You also get special discounts on travel and be able to discover the best of Canada from coast to coast. All the information that you need is on this leaflet, and your pass expires one year from today, so please go online and register soon. Now some important information about your certificate. You will receive a certificate that looks like this today. Just to let you know, this certificate is your legal status document that proves that you are a Canadian citizen. It's not an identity or travel document. A valid Canadian passport is the only reliable and universally accepted travel document that proves you have the right to enter Canada. Before applying for a passport or any government service, we ask that you wait until next Wednesday in order to allow time for our department to confirm in the system that you are now a Canadian citizen. Please ensure that the information on the front and back of your certificate is accurate. 
If it contains errors or if you have any questions, you can see me or a staff member following the ceremony. Lastly, you should safeguard your record of landing or confirmation of permanent resident document as you may be required to show it at a later time, for example, to obtain your old age security benefit. Following the ceremony today, um, you're inv invited to grab some coffee and tea, and we encourage you to stay and meet with your fellow Canadian citizens, their friends and families. Please take a moment now to turn off the volume of your communication devices, such as cell phones, before we start. And now, enjoy the ceremony. This citizenship ceremony is now in session. Mr. Dwight McCauley presiding. Please be seated. Mr. McCauley, in accordance with the provisions of the Citizenship Act, it is my privilege to present to you 96 candidates for citizenship who have complied with the requirements of the Citizenship Act and are now ready to take the oath of citizenship and become Canadian citizens. Okay, thank you very much. Um, hi everybody, good afternoon. Bonjour et bienvenue à tout le monde. Let's get this started right off on the right foot. Who's in a good mood this afternoon? One, two, three, good, good. That's exactly how we like to start a ceremony like this, with everybody in, in a good mood. Um, I know that many of you here today are actually uh, Canadian. In fact, uh, you're either born here, many of you have gone through the citizenship process that we we're finalizing and celebrating today. And you're here to support a friend, a, a co-worker, family member uh, who is about to join the Canadian family. Now you might think that my address today is really just geared towards those who are becoming new citizens. But in truth, uh, I really want to uh, speak to all of you here this afternoon. I want to begin uh, today's ceremony by acknowledging we're holding this ceremony on Treaty 5 land on the traditional territory of the uh, Nasikawe Asi Cree Nation. You know, the uh, history of Canada's Indigenous peoples it goes back a long way, long, long way, thousands of years, thousands of years, long, long before the Europeans arrived on the eastern shore of what would later become known, of course, as, as Canada. You know, it's essential that we acknowledge our country's past and also move towards a new nation-to-nation -nation relationship based on rights, respect, and based on partnership. All Canadians are now moving forward on the road to reconciliation, and it's offering all of us the opportunity to leave a proper legacy for future generations. We can do that, ladies and gentlemen, and the truth is, the truth is we must. Uh, let's face it, unless you're a member of the First Nations, we're all from somewhere else. It's true, we are all immigrants. Now. We don't all share the same past, that's a given. But we all share the same future. And that future, ladies and gentlemen, that future, that future is Canada. Uh, what a great day to become a Canadian, it really is. Nice outside, I understand it was nicer yesterday, but it is nice outside today. And what a great place to hold a ceremony in this beautiful Thompson Regional Community Center, the, the TRCC. You know, it probably goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. This is a day you're going to remember for the rest of your life. I hear this from people who've gone through the citizenship ceremony five years ago, 10 years ago, 30 and 40 years ago. And they tell me they remember the day they became a Canadian citizen, just like it was yesterday. Just like it was yesterday. It leaves that much of an impression on their memory. Next year, on May the 31st, 
I promise you, you're going to stop for a moment and you're going to say, hey, hey, this is the day I became a Canadian. This is the day my life changed. And you know what? It's going to change forever and it will change for the better. We have some very special guests with us uh, today and I'd like to thank them for coming out this afternoon to share this very special moment with you. Uh, those uh, are soon to be brand new Canadians. Uh, I want to start by uh, acknowledging uh, all of these special people that are here. The member of the Legislative Assembly for Thompson, Mr. Kelly Bindle is here. I'll be introducing him a little bit later on. He'll be speaking to you a little bit later on. Elder Jack Robinson is here from the Norway House uh, First Nation. Uh, Esther Latchman, President of the Thompson Citizen Council. Esther, thank you for being here. Appreciate that very much. Uh, Danielle Adams, who is here representing the Member of Parliament for this area, uh, Ms. Nikki Ashton. And uh, there's a number of other people who I'll be uh, recognizing you a little bit later on, but I thank you all very much for coming out today and, and being here with us, uh, with us this afternoon. You know, as uh, we look at what's happening elsewhere in the world, and we can do that very easily any time of the day or night, simply turn on the news, and you can see what's happening elsewhere in the world. And it reminds us how fortunate we are to be Canadians. It also reminds us that we need to acknowledge and celebrate our shared values as a nation, our achievements as a nation, and maybe most importantly, our place in the world. Because ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you this, Canada does have a very important place in the world today, and its stature seems to be growing with each passing month and year. You know, over the past several decades, Canada has become a very multinational and a very multicultural country. In fact, today, today there are over 100 different languages spoken every day in every major city in this country. Throughout our history, millions of immigrants have helped to build this country, and today Canada welcomes people from over 150 different countries each year. You know, it's thanks to Canada's amazing diversity, not in spite of it, but because of it, that we have become a role model for the world. And just to emphasize that point, I'm going to tell you that about 18 years ago, former United States President Bill Clinton said in a speech in Canada, he said, in a world darkened by ethnic conflicts that often tear nations apart, Canada, Canada stands as a role model for the world of how people of different cultures can live and work together in peace, prosperity, and in mutual respect. Did you know the United Nations has said for many years, actually many, many years, that Canada is one of the best places in the world to live? Did you know that? I know you did. That's why you're here this afternoon, isn't it? It really is. It's true. And in a few moments, this country's going to become an even better place to live because we're going to welcome 96 outstanding individuals into the Canadian family, and that would be you. Um, as you know, becoming a citizen of Canada, becoming a Canadian, is not easy. To arrive at where you are today, you've demonstrated courage and perseverance. You've had to work hard. You've had to study hard, you've had to adjust to a new culture, you've had to adjust to a new way of doing things, you've had to make new friends, some of you have had to learn a new language, and every single one of you, every one of you has had to make a new home in an unfamiliar country. An accomplishment like that, it's never easy, and it's certainly not without its challenges. You know, on the topic of citizenship, our Prime Minister, uh, Justin Trudeau, said recently, We've created a society where individual rights and freedoms, compassion and diversity are core to Canadian citizenship. But underlying that idea of Canada is a promise that we all have a chance to build a better life for ourselves and for our children. One of the true benchmarks of Canada, and I think one of the true benchmarks of being a Canadian, is the word freedom. You know, it's hard to outline what freedom is and what it means because I'll bet if we went around this room right now, we'd probably get a different answer from each and every one of you as to what you think freedom is and what it means. But as you become new citizens of Canada, as you become Canadians, and as you embrace and celebrate the new freedoms you're about to receive, I want you to always remember, in fact, I want you to never forget this, the freedom we have, the freedom you are about to receive as Canadians was not free at all. Over 110,000 Canadians lost their lives in the two world wars that happened in the last century, in the Korean War 
and in many subsequent conflicts up to and including the current war that's now going on in the nation of Afghanistan. And their final resting place is found in 74 different countries located around the globe. You know, the tens of thousands of Canadians who made the ultimate sacrifice for us, and I mean for us here in this room, these were real people. They were real people. In fact, they were real young people. And we owe them such a huge debt of gratitude and thanks, not just on Remembrance Day, which, as you know, is November the 11th, but really each and every day of the year. And of course, uh, let's never forget the brave men and women in our emergency and protective services who put their lives on the line for us every day. Now, I'm sure you notice that just standing here is a member of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. That scarlet uniform of the RCMP, I think, is recognized and respected virtually everywhere in the world. I honestly believe that. Here at home, that uniform stands for law and order. But it also stands for excellence, and it stands for service to the community. And Canadians everywhere, everywhere, coast to coast to coast, we are all very, very proud of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. And today we're delighted to have with us Constable Robert Cleveland from the RCMP. Thank you for being here, sir, and thank you for your service. Now, uh, as was mentioned a few moments ago, just before some of us came out here, uh, my name is Dwight McCauley, and I have the very distinct pleasure and really the honour to preside over today's citizenship ceremony. Until quite recently, I served the province of Manitoba in a position known as the Chief of Protocol. Now, you might be thinking, and I wouldn't blame you if you did, what kind of job is that? Well, one of the main functions of that job was to deal with people who came here from other nations as ambassadors. Now, why am I telling you that? Well, in just a few moments, you're going to become ambassadors. You are going to be ambassadors for one of the greatest, freest, richest, most beautiful countries that has ever existed, ever, in the history of this planet. You are going to be a Canadian. From this moment on, from this moment on, wherever you travel in the world, wherever you go, Never be shy of telling people that you are a Canadian. Be as proud of this country as this country is now today, of each and every one of you. You know, before you came to Canada, I'll bet you looked at a map many times. You looked at a map of the world and you thought, Canada, oh, that's a big place. Canada is a big place. You know what? Canada is a big place. Canada is the second largest country on earth. Second largest country on earth. But you know what? We have less than 1% of the world's population. Think about that for just a moment. We're the second largest country on earth, and we have less than 1% of the world's population. But I always tell people becoming new citizens this. Right now, at this very second, at this very second, there are approximately 7.6 billion people breathing air on this planet. 7.6 billion. And you know what? Most of them would give anything. They would literally give anything to trade places with you here this afternoon because you're about to become a Canadian. You know, becoming a Canadian is something very special. With this honour comes privileges. But ladies and gentlemen, becoming a Canadian also comes with responsibilities. Becoming a Canadian is more than a technical qualification for getting a new passport or being able to vote or qualifying for employment. As a Canadian, you have a right to live free of discrimination and persecution. You can express your opinion without fear. You can practice your religious faith, and you do have a right to work in any province or territory in this country. Each of you here today who are about to become new Canadians, each one of you has your own story as to how and why you selected Canada. For some of you, not all, but for some of you, the road to get here was not easy. And we know that. But regardless of where you're from, and regardless of whatever path you've taken to get here, the good news, the really good news, is that you are here. You made it. And you're about to become a Canadian. Uh, as those of you becoming a Canadian already know, becoming a Canadian is more. It's actually a lot more than a list of things you're allowed to do. 
becoming a Canadian is in fact a covenant between you and this nation. In other words, it's a bond. It's a bond that will go with you and it will be with you from this day forward and it'll be with you for the rest of your life. As you know, Canada is a proudly bilingual nation offering government services in both English and French. Toutes les lois fédérales du Canada sont rédigées dans les deux langues officielles. Toute personne a le droit d'être entendue en français ou en anglais à la Cour fédérale. Les Canadiens et les Canadiennes ont aussi certains droits concernant l'éducation de leurs enfants en français ou en anglais. Tous les citoyens de pays partageant ces droits et ces libertés. Et tout, sans distinction de race, d'origine nationale ou ethnique, de sexe, de religion, de age, ou de incapacité mentale ou physique, sont égaux devant la loi. All federal laws in Canada are in both official languages, and every person has a right to use either English or French in a federal court. Canadians also have certain rights concerning the education of their children in either English or French. Now, all Canadian citizens share these rights and these freedoms, and each is equal before the law, without discrimination based on sex, national or ethnic origin, race, religion, age, or mental or physical disability. Did you know that this week, May 27th to June 2nd, this week is National Access Ability Week. This week is a time for Canadians to promote inclusion and accessibility in our communities and our workplaces. It's also a time to celebrate the contribution of Canadians with disabilities. Currently, one in seven Canadians has a disability. It's important for all of us. It is important for all of us to change the way we think, the way we talk, and the way we act in order to eliminate barriers to accessibility. We are all going to benefit, ladies and gentlemen, from accessibility when we and our family members, friends, neighbors, and classmates and co-workers are able to fully participate and contribute in our communities and workplaces without any barriers. I want to expand that to people all over the world with disabilities. Many, many people, in fact, it's just about endless, have made extraordinary contributions to not only their country, but to the world. Let me give you some of uh, my examples. Have you ever heard of Helen Keller? Helen Keller was blind and deaf. Blind and deaf. She became the first person in North America to get, first blind and deaf person in North America to receive a university degree. She was an author. She was a strong advocate for women getting the right to vote. Beethoven. Beethoven was deaf for the last 25 years of his life, and it was during that time he wrote some of the most beautiful music the world has ever heard. Um, Vincent van Gogh suffered from depression throughout all of his adult life one of the finest artists who's ever graced uh, the, this planet. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was president of the United States and for his entire time during the Second World War that he was president, he was in a wheelchair. There's many examples, but I want to tell you about one very special one that's very important to me. He's a personal hero of mine, Terry Fox. Have you heard of Terry Fox? Terry Fox was from Manitoba. He was from Winnipeg. In the last years of his life, he was in British Columbia, but he was born and raised in Winnipeg. Terry Fox, when he was 18 years old, lost a leg to cancer. Right after that, he started planning what became known as the Marathon of Hope. He was going to run from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean and raise money for cancer research. You know, able-bodied people, able-bodied people will train for a whole year for a marathon. Terry Fox ran a marathon every day with one leg. Think about that for just a moment. He ran a marathon every day for over 3,000 miles. He was stopped near Thunder Bay when his cancer came back and he had to stop. Now, the Marathon of Hope after he passed away, which was shortly after he became very sick near Thunder Bay, was changed to the Terry Fox Run. As a result of this young man from Winnipeg, over $750 million has been raised around the world for cancer research. That was a person with a disability. And we're so proud that he's from the province of Manitoba. Anyways, something else I like to tell people who are becoming new citizens is that Canadians, we are a very giving, we are a very generous people as well. And we are a very kind people. When trouble and disaster strikes, whether it's here at home or abroad, Canadians will help. Whether it's neighbor helping neighbor or nation helping nation, 
we always stand ready to step up and lend a hand. A very quick example I like to give at a time like this, and I've done this for the last couple of months, is about two months ago, a horrific, horrific bus accident happened near the community of Humboldt, Saskatchewan. I'm sure you heard about it on the news. Almost an entire hockey team was injured or killed in that terrible, terrible tragedy. A GoFundMe page was set up to help the victims of the families that were affected by this bus crash. Over $15 million was raised. It became the largest GoFundMe page in the history of this nation. People everywhere, coast to coast to coast, they reached into their pockets, they reached into their wallets, and they gave whatever they could. They didn't do that because they knew somebody in Humboldt, Saskatchewan. They did it. They did it because that's what we do. We are Canadians. Whenever we see people in need, we will help. You know, over half of all the adults in Canada will at some point in their life volunteer to help in their community. And I hope those of you becoming new citizens today will do that. Go out into your community and volunteer. Share your talent, share your strengths, share your culture. Share your culture and work towards building an even better Canada. You can do that, ladies and gentlemen. I know you can, and I certainly hope you will. You know, one of the greatest and most precious gifts you can give anyone is your time. Think about it, and please volunteer. Now, I know all of you have waited anxiously for this day to arrive, but as you prepare to say the oath of citizenship, you need to take what you're saying to heart, because these are not merely words we are asking you to repeat. When you say the oath of citizenship, you are declaring your loyalty to Canada. And from this moment on, to always do your best for Canada. Now, I want to talk to those of you in the room who are already Canadian. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand up and say the oath of citizenship with those becoming new citizens here this afternoon. Do that, and I'm going to guarantee two things are going to happen. It's a guarantee. One, you're going to feel better when you walk out of here this afternoon. And two, you're actually going to walk a little taller, knowing you have just reaffirmed your citizenship in one of the greatest countries on earth. And it's the country all of us in this room, all of us, are lucky enough to call our home. And of course, that country is Canada. And you know, what a great gift it is to tell that family member, coworker, or friend that you stood up with them and said, hey, when you took your oath of citizenship, I stood up with you and said the oath of citizenship with you. It's a memory that both of you will carry and share, I'm guessing, for the rest of your lives. Now, we're going to proceed with the oaths. I will start with English. I will repeat it in French. And I would like you to please repeat both of the oaths with me. Now, I'd like to ask everyone, everyone, if you are able to please stand. Mr. McCauley will now proceed with the taking of the oath of citizenship. It is necessary that you repeat the oath. Please raise your right hand and repeat the oath of citizenship after Mr. McCauley. I swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty, to Her Majesty Queen, Elizabeth II, Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, Queen of Canada her, heirs her heirs and successors, and that I, that I will, faithfully will faithfully observe the laws of Canada, laws of Canada and fulfill my duties, fulfill my duties as, a as a Canadian citizen. Now, en français, I'll go slow. Je jure que je serai fidèle et porterai sincère allégeance à Sa Majesté, la Reine Elizabeth II, Reine du Canada, à ses héritiers et à ses successeurs que je Observerai fidèlement 
les lois du Canada et que je remplirai loyalement mes obligations de citoyen canadien. Congratulations, you did it. You did it. Please be seated. Mr. McCauley will now present the certificates of citizenship. As I call your names, please come forward. There will be an opportunity for pictures with Mr. McCauley and the special guests after the ceremony. After you receive your certificate, please go to the table on my left. Uh, that's where Sylvie and Will are sitting, to sign the Oath of Citizenship form. After you have signed the Oath of Citizenship form, please return to your seat. All right, my sincere apologies if I mispronounce your name. It's not intentional at all. Okay. Adolfosi family, Adigoke, Amatola, Toby, and Tuni. And let's give everybody a big round of applause for each candidate that comes up. Fumi Akande. Asil Al Ahab Babi. Mohammed Farooq Ali. <laughs> Mohammed Arsalan. John Atia. Rita Bai. Bornea family, Mitchell, Aletha, and Keon.
Chowdhury family, Asim and Kiran. Ivgen Chu Chukalo. Quavis family, Riza, Mark, and Rira. Delos Ray's family, Raymond, Miranda, and Zephan. Devani family, Jetendra Kumar and Usha. Amola Baki Feliyimu. <laughs> Furi family, Barnadine, Bernard, Kyra, and Magenta. David William Green. Asya Greenidge and Shakiba Griffith. What do you think? 
We'll do it anyways. You have to come back, though. Congratulations. Daisy Guilford. And Keith Handa. Samantha Jane Humphreys. I think we can clap louder, right, guys? More clapping. Arfel Ibanez. Sajid Ur Rahman Janjwa. Ruby Cora. Lyle Kathurani. Madura Kumaraj. Hasuma Tiben Ladhani. Chinmai Mangoli.
Carol Andrea Martin. Masson family, Gertej, Harkirat, Jasveer, and Satinder. Sumari Mengi. Matthias Muller. Brom and Deidre Oberholzer. Parekh family, Himanjini and Jignish. And now for part of the ceremony where we start with the Patels. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> Jim and Jimben and Zeno. Rajesh and Dipal Ben Patel. <laughs> Divya Ben Patel.
Harish Kumar and Ankita Patel. Janelle Patel. <laughs> Mahendra Kumar, Anjali, Yami, and Dev Patel. Sandeep, Rupal, and Haya Patel. Sanjay Kumar, Vidi, and Het Kumar, um, Patel, sorry. Swataban Patel. <laughs> Vipal Kumar, Jagrutaban, and Dhruvi Patel. Rajesh Pula Parmabil and Regita Rajesh. Ayman Rahimi, Farnoosh Mohammadi, and Ilya Rahimi.
Reynold Roldan. Alka Satcher. Suman Sarkar. <laughs> Marie Joelle Shudin. Narinder Sood. <laughs> Pamela Albus. Chinedum Uwa. <laughs> Shamila Wilkinson. Nilsa Pitti, Eric Yanguez, and Christian Yanguez. Olga Yermakova. <laughs> Kemaldine Mohammed Zinu. This concludes the presentation of the certificates.
I was wondering where you were going. So, I've got one last question for those of you who just became Canadians. Was that so hard? Come on, smile, people. It's a great day. <laughs> you know what, ladies and gentlemen? If you were keeping count, or in case you weren't, I'm just going to remind you again. 96 people representing 16 different nations from around the world became citizens of Canada in this room just now. I think that's amazing. How about everybody giving everybody a great round of applause? <clears throat> well, I mentioned uh, earlier in the, uh, in the ceremony today that we had some very special people with us, and that, that's certainly true. We have a lot of very special people. You're gonna hear from two of them uh, right now, as a matter of fact. It's my great pleasure to introduce your first speaker. In fact, I had the great pleasure of coming up here with him this morning. Uh, he is your member of the Legislative Assembly for the City of Thompson. Ladies and gentlemen, please a nice round of applause for Mr. Kelly Bendel. <laughs> Sir? Tanzi, hello. Respectfully acknowledging we are on Treaty 5 land, traditional NCN territory, homeland to the Métis people and home to all of us here today. On behalf of the Honourable Brian Pallister, the Premier of Manitoba, and all of our colleagues down at the Manitoba Legislature, I want to welcome Elder Jack Robinson, all elders, the Red Surge, the dignitaries, the 96 new Canadians, and all of you to the 2018 Canadian Citizenship Awards here in Thompson, Manitoba, Canada. And the slight off chance there might be a person out there that, that doesn't know who I am. I'm the MLA for Thompson. I represent the North in the Manitoba Legislature. And I flew up this morning specifically for this ceremony. I took extra leave to come here and I'm flying back tonight because we're voting in the Legislature tonight. And I did not want to miss it because out of all the duties I have to perform as an MLA, this is by far the most enjoyable. And it's because of you. It's, it's enjoyable because it's, it's, I get to share in the joy of all you people becoming new Canadians and I get to welcome you to the province. But it, it's, it's a milestone in your life. You're achieving a dream and it's an honor to be part of it. Today in Thompson in the north, we're, welcome you, we're welcoming you in the greatest part of the province, in the greatest province, in the greatest country of the world. And we celebrate your diversity. 96 new, 96 new Canadians from 16 different countries, some of which I hear might have milder climates than we do here in the north. And we, and we thank you for choosing here anyway. <laughs> Today is a celebration. It's a, it's a celebration of your culture, really, and, and the Canadian culture. We're celebrating our diversity, but we're also celebrating our similarities. And I sincerely thank you for letting me take part in the joy you're having today. I want to congratulate you on becoming Canadians. I want to welcome you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bindle. Uh, well said. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is the uh, president of the Thompson Citizenship Council. A nice round of applause, if you will, for Ms. Esther Latchman. Uh, 
Hi everyone, Tanse. I must like to con congratulate all the new citizenship. I'm Esther Latman from Thompson Citizenship Council, from known as the Medical Center. And I must say how happy I'm pleased to see all these new faces. I remember 34 years ago when I become one, it was only about 25 of us. And I asked myself, what am I doing in this country? Where is it cold? I remember landing in Winnipeg the 23rd of January, which is a beautiful, warm country, warm climate. What am I doing here? It has to be a reason why I'm here. When my time to come to become a Canadian citizen, I wasn't sure if I wanted to give up my citizenship from Guyana, but I said, no, I want to. I come for a, a month and I'm here 38 years. So it have to be a good reason why am I still here. And how happy I am to see all these new faces. I must say, as Judge White, White say, volunteer. I remember I asked myself, why am I volunteer? I enjoy it. I like to mix with a different culture, the different people. And I know Thompson is my second home, I always said. I want to move down west, down Winnipeg, and I, I'm not sure if it's a good or a bad, but I would give up. I would love, I still love Thompson. Anyway, I don't think I have much to say, but I'm happy to see all these new faces. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Esther. Appreciate that very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're actually getting close to the end of the ceremony. And in a few moments, we're going to sing our national anthem. Our national anthem. Yours now, mine. Our national anthem. I don't know if you've ever thought about the words in O Canada, but O Canada is one of the more beautiful anthems, I think, that exists in the world. I really believe that. But there are two words in O Canada that I think describe this country perfectly. Two words. And from now on, whenever you sing O Canada, oh, by the way, the true two words are not true north, if you've been watching the hockey games lately. But from now on, whenever you sing O Canada, if it's at a hockey game or baseball game or community event or what have you, and you come to these two words, I hope you'll pause for just a moment and think about this very special day when you became a Canadian citizen. Now, the two words, they're also the motto on the coat of arms for the province of Manitoba. So what are these two words? Well, the two words, ladies and gentlemen, are glorious and free. There isn't a more glorious country, I, I truly believe there isn't a more glorious country on the face of the earth than the one all of us have as our home, and that's Canada. And as for being a freer nation, ladies and gentlemen, you are in one of the freest nations that's ever existed in the history of this world. And that, of course, is our home. You're right. <clears throat> now. As you can uh, guess, it takes a lot of people to put on a ceremony like this. And uh, we want to, I want to uh, single out several of these people for, for all of the work they've done. Also, the people from this, this beautiful community center, I want to thank them very much for letting us hold this ceremony here. Thank, thank you very much. Now, I'll just get you to hold your applause, if you don't mind, just for a moment, because I have a number of people I want to, uh, I want to thank. I want to thank, of course, the member of the Legislative Assembly, Kelly Bendel, for being here. Thank you for being here, sir. Elder Jack Robinson, thank you, sir. Again, good to see you again. Nice to have you here. Esther Latchman, thank you very much. Uh, Danielle Adams, representing the uh, member of Parliament, Nikki Ashton, who's here today. Assisting the uh, clerk today were Sylvie Auger uh, over here, Will Vivas. I don't even know. Oh, Will's over in the corner. Sharon Fletcher, also over in the corner over there. Uh, representing the Institute for Canadian Citizenship. In fact, he was good enough to hand out a beautiful pin to all of those becoming new citizens today. Ali Khan Haji, thank you very much, Ali Khan. Uh, Siva Vijanthera, down here. And uh, Salima Vizram, over there on the, on the, on the side as well. Um, so, uh, 
Oh, there's one other person I want to thank. I actually hardly ever see them, but I know they're right sort of behind me. Uh, and there's no offense. I know after the ceremony, some of us are going to take pictures. This is the guy you really want to have your picture taken with. The rest of us are just sort of holding up the other end of the line. And we know that in advance. That, of course, is Constable Robert Cleveland. Thank you for all for being here. Appreciate it. <clears throat> now, the, uh, the one other person I want to thank, of course, is the person who sort of brings it all together, makes all of this happen. And you know what? It's not me. It's the clerk of the ceremony, Farida Robinson. Farida, right there. And there's one other person I want to thank. You haven't heard from her yet, but you're going to in a few moments. And that's uh, Janice Bonner, who's going to sing O Canada for us. Thank you very much for being here, Janice. Appreciate that very much. Now, just before we get to O Canada, I want to tell you that I think I've mentioned it twice, maybe three times today. This is a day you're never going to forget. And I, I believe that sincerely. But you know what? It's a day that I will never forget. And that's the truth. And I want to thank all of you sincerely from the bottom of my heart for letting me be involved in this very, very special ceremony with each of you here today. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's just that time. And uh, please welcome Janice Bonner to come up and sing O Canada. Please sing in the language of your choice. This citizenship ceremony is now closed. Congratulations to all of you. If you would like to have your picture taken with Mr. McCauley, the RCMP, and special guests, we're going to ask that you line up in the middle, and whomever, actually, you know what? Line up on the side here, and whomever is taking your photo can line up in the middle. And lastly, please join us for a reception at the back here, uh, brought to you by ICC. Thank you so much. Wave your flags, everybody.